All right, let's move on to segment three this week. We are going with Say What? Because this week, uh, Cedric, you uh, heard uh, about Le'Veon Bell, the uh, t fantastic running back who uh, sat out last year in Pittsburgh, now with the Jets, said he picked the Jets because he wanted to play for a team that could win a Super Bowl, that could contend. That was his pri priority in this whole thing. But last year, he was with a bunch in Pittsburgh that was pretty darn good, and he didn't play. Is this just hypocritical, or is he just a little kooky? It's hypocritical. Let's call it what it is. He was with Big Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown, two all-time greats at their position, and Juju Smith-Schuster, one of the best young receivers in the game, yep. and one of the best offensive lines in all of football. So it was set up for him to play for a Super Bowl last year in Pittsburgh, but he held out because he wanted more money. I'm, I'm fine with that. I understand that. Le'Veon Bell is one of the hardest working backs in the game. But don't go to the New York Jets and try to tell us that, that you're there to win a Super Bowl. No, you're not. <laughs> you're in the same division with the Patriots. You're not about to win a Super Bowl with the Jets. You would have won a, You would have had a better chance sticking around in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Call it what it is. You went to the Jets because uh, your marriage with Pittsburgh dissolved over money. It turns out that you didn't get the money that you would have gotten in Pittsburgh you got to getting about the same money, but a little bit more guaranteed with the Jets. And now you're with a crappy ball club. You're gonna they're gonna run you into the ground. Your best receiver is not named Antonio Brown. Yeah. His name is Robbie Anderson. That's how bad things have gotten for you on that side of the ball. The Jets are as long as the division alignments are the same. The New York Jets aren't gonna win the AFC East because guess what? There's a team from Foxborough. They have to play them twice every season. Yeah, so yeah. it's a bad division, but you're going to lose to the uh, New England Patriots every year. And so Le'Veon Bell, as good as he is, uh, don't don't try to th don't try to give us that noise because we're not buying it. Yeah. You went to the Jets because you didn't get the money you wanted in Pittsburgh, and you had you had to leave to save face. Don't call it a, a Super Bowl decision. Yeah. No, Kevin Durant left Oklahoma City to go to Golden State to win NBA championships. That's the truth. Yeah. That wasn't a money decision. That was a, a ring decision. Yeah. You left because of money. Two different things. Yeah. If he wants to if he wants to go win a Super Bowl, go sign with the Patriots. Go sign with Robo Tom. You'll have a much better chance to uh to do that now. They wouldn't have paid him, I'm sure, what the Jets would. I mean they oh, no. they, they know what uh, what kind of issues you know, he's, he's had with previous teams. And you know what? It, if it didn't work out in Pittsburgh, that's fine. I mean, I, Cedric, you've made the comment uh, today and previously that, you know, guys that are talented and, and pro sports deserve a chance to decide where they want to play and where they don't want to play for that matter. So, if, you know, Le'Veon Bell, it didn't work out in, in Pittsburgh. He wanted to play somewhere else. I'm totally okay with that. But just to, uh, you know, basically revise history, uh, it just seems ridiculous because – there are a lot of teams that, you know, potentially are in the, the Super Bowl mix that I'm sure would be, uh, you know, benefit by a player of Bell's stature going to play for them in the backfield. But uh, I don't think the Jets are in anybody's early season or off season uh, line to the Super Bowl. It, it, it might happen. I mean, we've seen crazy things happen in the NFL. Maybe that's maybe that's the uh, outcropping of you know the parody that we see in the NFL is guys think they can go anywhere and potentially win a Super Bowl. Maybe that maybe that's uh, you know one of the good things that Roger Goodell has done set up a league where occasionally a team does come out of the blue, but. I'm much more on board with your prediction that Texas and Texas A&M play in the Cotton Bowl than if you tell me the <laughs> Jets are going to play in the Super Bowl, Cedric. You're not going to tell me that, are you? Well, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, you know, not, and I'm a I'm an NFL historian, so uh, who knows? The Jets may may play in a Super Bowl. After all, it's only been what 50 years since they played <laughs> in one. So uh, who's to say? We might be a hundred by the time they get another shot. Yeah. I mean it. That's how it is. Yeah, yeah. I don't see them playing the Super Bowl this year. Uh, Le'Veon Bell's comments notwithstanding uh, anything in that regard. Okay, my say what this week is the NCAA. They've made some changes to basketball rules, including the moving of the three-point line now going out to 22 feet 
one and three fourths inches, a longer shot. Uh, you know that the the uh, NBA or the NFL, the NFL, the NCAA had a line that was uh, similar to the high school. Now it's getting a little bit closer to the NBA. But uh, Cedric, I mean, I like this from the standpoint of pulling shooters out from the lane. I think a lot of times in in the uh, college level, you see it just becomes a lot of you know, sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat almost. You don't see the free-flowing nature of basketball at the college level like you do at the pro level. But I'm not sure, are there enough good shooters at the college level to pull the three-point line out far enough to help the, help the flow of the game, the aesthetics, the, the scoring? I mean, we've seen scoring go up with some teams in, in college basketball, but yet that really is predicated on having great three-point shooters. You know, OU scoring went up the year they had Buddy Heald. OU scoring went up the year they had Trey Young. But if you don't have great three-point shooting, you're not going to be scoring the ball like you are when you when you do. So I don't know that this helps. Uh, you know, Cedric, I, I know that we've we've seen good basketball in our neck of the woods. We've seen bad. But does this help the NCAA game in your mind? Well, I live in Austin, so you know, I know you're not asking me if, about three-point shooting, the team <laughs> I got to watch every year. Those guys couldn't throw it in the ocean last year. I, I'm sure when Shaka Smart got that news, he was like, all right, I think I need a drink. I mean, it, uh, I, I just don't know that that's going to help the Longhorns because they've struggled mightily. They're on the worst three-point shooting teams in the Big 12, so they've struggled in that, but um, – Overall, I think it will pull some of those guards away from the elbow and make them play a little bit more one-on-one -on -one defense. I don't know if there's that many pure shooters in college basketball that's going to move that needle yeah. even more. What I hope it does, Jen, um, and I know I'm old school when I say this and I'm aging myself, dating myself here, I hope it ends up to more of teams going to the rack and yeah. driving it to the hole. And instead of uh, guys running to the three-point circle on fast breaks, maybe they run to the lane, yeah. run to the rim to get more layups. So hopefully they will open it up that way. Because remember, I remember a time when fast breaks ended in dunks and not three-pointers. <laughs> and I think the game was prettier back then. You are old school. No, I remember that too. Yeah, and I, I agree. I think that's the one thing when I saw that news come out my thought wasn't, man, I hope that expands the three-point shooting range of, of shooters in the college game. It was To me, it was all about how does it change the aesthetic of what we see in the paint, what we see inside the three-point line. You know, are guys going to have a little bit more freedom of movement? I hope so because I think that that's where, um, yes, I mean, the NBA, the ball movement around the perimeter, it's great, but a lot of, uh, a lot of what the college game needs is more guys that are able to shoot, you know, that elbow jumper, uh, you know, but they got to get away from it and, and, and figure out some, some spacing issues. And so often it just becomes, like I said, that hand-to-hand -hand combat, it feels like a little bit uh, inside there. So we'll see. Uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily know that we're going to see an uptick in three-point shooting percentages, but maybe we do see a better product on the floor once those college teams get back out there. It won't be that long before that happens too. But that's it for this week on the Riders Block. We appreciate you joining us. For Cedric, I'm Jenny. Be sure to join us next week.